Thank you, Lord. Message 9. That is Christ as a resurrection and the grain of wheat. In this message, there are two main Roman numerals. It shows us that we can experience, enjoy, and express Christ as a resurrection. That is in the book of John 11, chapter 11. The second Roman numeral, we can experience, enjoy, and express Christ as the grain of wheat that is spoken in John 12, which another brother will speak in this Roman numeral. In the first Roman numeral, firstly, we need to see that in John eleven twenty five, the Lord says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Dear brothers and sisters, He is the resurrection and the life. And so, this resurrection and life are the two important key factors. In point A, it says, as a condition, in order to live in resurrection, we must see the unveiled truth concerning Christ's resurrection. Christ, in His resurrection, was once in for all and completed three important things, which is in small one, two, and three. Firstly, Christ in His humanity was begotten by God in His resurrection to be the firstborn Son of God. Originally, He was the only begotten, but in His resurrection, He was the firstborn Son of God. Secondly, all the believers of Christ, amen, all the believers of Christ were regenerated by God the Father through the resurrection of Christ for the producing of the church as his body, his reproduction. Thank you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the resurrection. And the church will be the reproduction of Christ. This will be spoken in Roman numeral 2 as, the, as a multitude grain of wheat. Point three, Christ as the last Adam became the life-giving spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, these are the three great major factors. Firstly, the Lord became the firstborn son of God. Secondly, all the believers were regenerated through the resurrection produces the church as his reproduction. Thirdly, he became the life-giving spirit. So... In conclusion, without the resurrection of Christ, or if the resurrection of Christ did not include any of these matters, whether the Lord is the head of the body, all the members of the body, or the spirit as the essence and the reality, there is no church. Dear brothers and sisters, it means that the church is in resurrection. The body of Christ in the same matter if the Lord did not become the life-giving spirit, there is no economy. There is no God's economy. Because God cannot dispense himself into us. So dear brothers and sisters, this is the truth that we need to see. Second, in point B, it says the spirit is the reality of the triune God. The reality of resurrection and the reality of the body of Christ. Saints, if we look at John Chapters 14, 15, and 16. These verses mention the church as the body, as the house, as the vine, as the spirit of the sun. So we see these three chapters. The Lord speaks of the spirit of reality, which the Lord says that once the spirit of reality comes, he will guide us into all the reality. Amen. So all the reality of the triune God that passed through all the process is the reality that is consummated. And thus, everything that belongs to the triune God through all the processes, all that he has attained and obtained has became the reality of the body of Christ. So dear saints, the reality of the body of Christ requires the process of the triune God becoming the spirit of reality to bring us into our experience within his body. As we observe the Lord Jesus in his human living on this earth, we need to live according to his footsteps. 
the same way the Lord has been living on the earth. We can deal with all the negative factors by the effectiveness of Christ's death. This death is the end. So we would not lose our temper. We would not blame others or criticize others because the death of Christ has been substantiated as the spirit of reality, which is within us. This brings in the reality of death, the effectiveness of death. All these elements becomes our reality. Many of us from our background, from our society, some of us are bosses in our companies. We may lose our temper with our subordinates or employees, but in the church, the church in resurrection needs to pass through death. The spirit of reality, as he has passed through all these processes, so the spirit of reality, which has been processed and can be applied into the reality of the church as the body. So the saints, as we're in the church, do we still criticize others or blame others according to our natural life? Dear saints, if we are bringing this reality of the triune God, the process triune God, becoming the reality of Christ, the only way is we become one spirit with him. We need to set our mind on the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Once this is accomplished, whatever we do, whatever we act upon others, whatever we deal with, whether negative aspects or positive aspects is according to the spirit. If you look at John 8, we see this adulterous woman who was caught and they wanted to know if the Lord would, would judge this adulterous woman while well, he has the authority to judge this adulterous woman. He did not carry out the judgment. So dear brothers and sisters, as we are in the church life, we've been in the church life for so long. Maybe we blame others even talk about their faults according to our natural life. This is spontaneous in our natural life. And so for us to have the reality of the body of Christ, for the spirit of reality to bring us into the reality of the body, we need to be in our spirit. We need to set our mind on the spirit. And thus, whatever we do to others, even what we speak, needs to be in this spirit. And it needs to pass through this spirit. So dear brothers and sisters, in our church life, many times we may serve more than others. We may have more zeal or more zealous than others without knowing. Or maybe we know it, whether with or without intent. We may blame others in a very simple way. We may look down on others. We may act very much like the Pharisees in Luke 18. That even as they pray, they still think that they are more ethical than others. Even they would blame others as they pray with the Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, may the Lord really have mercy on us. That is not the church. That is not the body of Christ because that is still in the natural realm. Look at point C. In order to be in the reality of the body of Christ, we need to be absolutely in the resurrection life of Christ. Oh, dear saints, the church is absolutely of the element of Christ, absolutely in resurrection, and absolutely in the heavenlies. So for those who are owners or managers or CEOs, those with people underneath you, you may be in the company, you may be in your own jurisdiction, you could correct, rebuke, or blame those people under you in a spontaneous way according to how we are in our natural being. But dear brothers and sisters, the church is not like that. The church is in resurrection. Even the elements and essence comes from Christ. This is in the heavenly realm, not earthly realm. The church does not belong to us. It's in the heavenly realm. It is not our company. It's not our organization that we can say or do whatever we want. Oh Lord Jesus, may the Lord gain us. What is the church? The church is Christ himself. Point two, the golden lampstand typifying the church as the body of Christ portrays Christ 
as the resurrection life, growing, branching, budding, and blossoming to shine the light. Dear brothers and sisters, for us to place a blame on others, even to criticize others, this needs to be under the light. If we are in darkness in our natural life and we criticize others, we're bringing death to them. So may the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. So that we can see that the church is completely in resurrection. And then we have the second portrayal in number 17. This is in point D, the budding rod. This budding rod, at the time, there was a rebellion in the children of Israel in number 17. Jehovah commanded that they would take the rod from all the 12 tribes and the rod is relating to life, which was cut out, no longer having any leaves or roots. Once you place it there, and whichever rod that Jehovah selected, you would see that rod blossoming. That signifies the resurrection life. And once Aaron's rod budded, it means that Aaron has the authority that was given to him by God. And so, dear brothers and sisters, this election isn't uh, out of man, but it is according to God. And so, the basis of our authority and our service is not determined by contending or in the natural realm, but it is through death and resurrection. Amen. And so, our principle in our service is in resurrection. And especially in resurrection, it needs to pass through death. Dear saints, in this world, just for you to raise your voice, it feels like you have authority. Even for you to criticize others, even to accuse others, it seems like you have the authority. But, dear saints, do not forget that Aaron's rod eventually was placed in the Ark of the Testimony as a remembrance unto eternity. It means the basis of our service, if it's not through resurrection, it could not last until eternity. It cannot be remembered until eternity. So may the Lord really raise our view for us to see the basis of our services in the church life, that is in resurrection. What is this resurrection? Point four, the budding of the rod is a humbling experience. Dear brothers and sisters, why is this? Because this rod signifies death while without life, this resurrection isn't out of our own conduct, but it's according to the resurrection life of Christ. And so in this point, no one can boast in themselves. And so dear brothers and sisters in the church life, we need to learn very much like Luke 17, 7 to 10. You can read this. We may preach gospel we, or even shepherd others. However, the Lord also gave us a humbling experience that we would still say that we are unprofitable slaves. We have done what we ought to have done. This word was directed to themselves. It wasn't a criticism on others. Or it wasn't a comparison between one to another. But dear brothers and sisters, if we pass through death and resurrection, we will not criticize others in such a way. We would still criticize ourselves that I am still unprofitable slaves. Otherwise, we are a foolish ones. We are prideful because we think we are better than others. Very much like the Pharisee in Luke 18, where the Lord says that the sinner who wouldn't even want to raise up their heads, once they return to their homes, they're still more righteous than the Pharisees. So may the Lord really gain us. Amen. It's very much like a cult. In Mark 11, as the Lord rode this cult into Jerusalem, and the people were shouting and praising. Those who were praising the Lord was really just praising the Lord himself. It's not relating to the cult. So dear brothers and sisters, the resurrection life within us, even to be expressed out of us, others are accepted. Even God accepting us, it's relating to the resurrection life of Christ. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, even in our services, may the Lord gain us that all our services 
would grant or give glory to God, and others would give glory to the Lord, and not for anyone else to exalt us. May the Lord gain us. Amen. May the Lord lift up our view that we can experience and enjoy and express Christ as our resurrection life. Why is this? Because this is not out of us. It's really from the Lord Himself. And so for those who knows and experience resurrection life, they are hopeless in themselves. They know they can't do anything. Dear brothers and sisters, actually, if we go to Paul's experience in 2 Corinthians, which is the experience of a person who is completely matured in life, we can see that Paul's experience of Christ in 2 Corinthians 1, Paul says, indeed, we ourselves had the response of death in ourselves, that we should not base our confidence on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. This is to trust and depend on God in the resurrection life. As Paul was a New Testament minister, what did he do? His function is to perfect the saints, even to supply Christ, to build up the church as the body of Christ. Amen. So if we do not have an experience in this way, dear brothers and sisters, we fear that our services will not count in the eyes of God. So may the Lord really gain us so that we can train in this matter, that we would live in the resurrection life. And thus here, point eight, a man must come to the end of himself before he will be convinced of his utter uselessness. If a man has never realized his own inability, he can never experience God's ability. This point means that Resurrection means that we cannot make it and that God is the one who does everything in us, through us, and for us. Oh, so dear saints, in conclusion, in point eight, it means that as a Christian, it's not only it's difficult, it's impossible because it's not in the realm of the natural life, but it is in the, tri the process triune God, consummated even to live in us as the all-inclusive spirit so that he allows us to do all these things and even allow us to be an overcomer. There's no other way, dear brothers and sisters. The natural man needs to be terminated. And here in point E says, when we do not live by our natural life, but live by the divine life within us, we are in resurrection. The issue of this is the body of Christ. Natural life is the opposite of the divine life. If we take a look at the book of the experience of life, dealing with our natural man is in the third stage. And then the fourth stage, we'll talk about the body of Christ. And so what is the issue? The issue is the body of Christ. Amen. So because of this, we need to be discipled by the Lord to be divine and mystical persons living divine life by denying our natural life. Dear saints, if we have the authority to condemn others, accuse others, judge others, convict others, but we do not act on all these things, then we are in the resurrection life. That is very much like the Lord himself, because the Lord has the authority to convict others, but he did not convict any of them. While we do not have the resurrection life, or we do not have the experience receiving adequate resurrection life and we like to convict others we like to condemn others we like to criticize others sometimes we don't even do this up front but instead put this into prayer and so dear brothers and sisters everything in the natural life even though it goes in accordance to the bible it's still not in the reality of the body of christ saints even prayer is relating to the bible but even in our prayers if we pray naturally then we would just convict others very much like the Pharisee in Luke 18. Oh, Lord Jesus. And so may the Lord really gain us so that we can grow in life. We can grow in the resurrection life and this would increase in us. So point F, it says, in order to live in resurrection, we must know, experience, and gain the God of resurrection. Dear saints, we have received the God of resurrection within us, but in our experience, even for us to know and experience him, we do not have adequate experience. And thus, very much like Colossians, he himself is the head and the body will be supplied 
by means of joints and sinews, grows with the growth of God. So the God within our spirit needs to increase into all the parts of our soul. Amen. And so God is working through the cross to terminate us, to bring us to an end so that we would no longer trust in ourselves, but in the God of resurrection. Very much like Paul in 2 Corinthians 1. If we have this experience and see the experience in the third stage, not only to deal with our natural man, but humbling ourselves. Amen. In chapters or point 12 in the book Experience of Life, which speaks about accepting the discipline of the Holy Spirit, which is relating to the arrangement of the outer circumstances which is the Lord's chastisement. Even our suffering is so that we would take part in His nature. So they are saying the living God and the resurrected God can be your experience. But some of us experience the God who heals you when you're sick. But after you are healed, you go back to the world. But for some saints, as they're going through this sickness and they think they would probably pass away, but then they experience a resurrection life. And this resurrection life increases and spread within him. This was an experience that reminded me that as we're suffering in the human life, maybe we have an accident. And even in our accidents, we still are the same. We do not have any operation of God's nature. Then that is very sad because you're basically suffering without gaining anything. Many of us are in the natural life. Some were willing to be imprisoned for the Lord. I heard about the testimony in China. Some were imprisoned for the Lord, but they instead condemn others who are not imprisoned and say, they are incomparable to me because they are not willing to be imprisoned. This speaking isn't according to the nature of God. But we have another saints who, because they were affected by conviction from the United States, that the Lord's recovery is a cult. And this sister was imprisoned and she had to go into labor in prison. And so her daughter was born and grew up in prison. And for those who caused her to be imprisoned for 10 years, this person went to visit her. The sister never convicted her accuser. She only said, thank you, Lord. This is God's arrangement. And that's why this sister learned the lesson of being dealt with in the natural man and was under the discipline of the Holy Spirit. And she was able to dispense the Lord into others, very much like Paul in 2 Corinthians 4. that Paul says, death operates in me and life in you. Dear saints, for us to be a testimony, even to supply life to others, we need to be in resurrection. We need to pass through death and resurrection. We need to have this continual experience. Otherwise, our testimony, even as we are being a testimony, we keep on boasting ourselves. The Lord has healed me in this way and that way. Or even in our testimony, without knowing, we condemn others. We convict others that they do not love the Lord. They are incomparable to us. Oh, Lord Jesus, even as we are praying, we pray as we are a righteous one and we convict others. So dear brothers and sisters, that kind of prayer do not supply life to others. This prayer, even in the New Testament, our prayer is to bring life to supply others. In 1 John, so dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord have mercy on us. Because of this, on the one hand, we need to pass through suffering, but we're not trying to find suffering because Paul was a New Testament minister. He just follows the ministry and he faced difficulties and suffering. And that caused him to have an increase of God's nature within him. And he has an experience. And thus he can speak in such a way. In 2 Corinthians 4, we have the outer man that is decaying. That is our natural life. Our natural life needs to decay. But our inner man needs to be renewed day by day. We are renewed until eventually we become the new Jerusalem. This is really what will last until eternity. In order to live in resurrection, we must be renewed day by day by being nourished with the fresh supply of the resurrection life. Especially in the morning, 
As we wake up, many times we are under our mind. We want to read the messages, but instead of calling upon the name of the Lord by exercising our spirit, exercising our spirit to come close to the Lord so that our mind will be renewed. Why? Because we've been sleeping the entire night. So just to wake up, just to call upon the name of the Lord, this is to deny ourselves. Amen. So may the Lord have mercy on us before we're even coming to touch the word. Before we exercise our mind, we need to exercise our spirit by calling upon the name of the Lord. Amen. So point four, the real Christian life is to have the God of resurrection added into us morning and evening and day by day. What is the way? This way is for us to contact God, open ourselves to Him, allow Him to enter into our being. He would add the newness of life within us day by day, renewing us day by day. May the Lord gain us in our church life. Amen. And because of this, we need to experience, we need to enjoy Christ, express Christ as the resurrection life, especially in our living, in our speaking, in our church life, so that this resurrection life on the one hand would be a testimony through us and this life would be dispensed into others. That is for the building up of the church as the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we continue to enter into the messages of the semi-annual training. And in our past International Blending Conference, we have entered into the entirety of these messages already. However, it was like eating fast food because we covered two messages per session. So we couldn't get much taste out of it and then the session ended. So uh, through the opportunity of this Eastern Conference, we can re-enter into the uh, second half of the entirety of this message. The topic of the training is to know, experience, enjoy, and then eventually we can magnify, express Christ. And now as we come to message nine, we are experiencing and enjoying Christ as the resurrection and the grain of wheat. And our brother Pipan had already uh, fellowship with us. And, we, and I will continue uh, to fellowship more concerning this. And in an introductory words, our brother mentioned Concerning resurrection, we have to notice three things. First, we have to see this matter in the aspect of our Lord Jesus. Our Lord said, I am resurrection and I am life. However, this message not only tells us that our Lord Jesus is resurrection, but he is also the God of resurrection passing through death and resurrection. In Acts chapter 2, verse 24, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, since it was not possible for him to be held by it. And in Revelation 1, 18, also shows us that I became dead, and behold, I am living forever and ever. And the second aspect, we have to take a look from the aspect of Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, Paul testified that he was trained. And then in the process, he did not base his confidence on himself, but on God who raises the dead. And... When it, uh, in chapter 4, Paul continued to experience that his outer man is decaying, yet his inner man is being renewed day by day. This shows us the God that Paul experienced is not just a living God, but also a God of resurrection and the God who raised the dead. And the result of our experiencing such a God 
is that although our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. And then there's the aspect of what shall we do to experience this? We have to experience and endure Christ in his resurrection so that we might walk and live in the newness of life and serve in the newness of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. We have to be new. We have to walk in the newness of life and serve in the newness of the Spirit. And on the other hand, we also have to beware of becoming old. And in the beginning, our brother mentioned the word 成福, which means shrewd, uh, which includes the meaning of becoming old. And the taste had become different, had spoiled. It was new, but then over time, it became old. Or like a bread, which was soft at first when it's fresh, and then eventually it, be, it became hardened, and then it, it molded. And we have to beware of this kind of situation. And there are two main causes uh, to this, to becoming old. That is first, not forgiving each other. And in our church life, when we are coordinating with one another, uh, sometimes we are being offended, but we cannot forgive others. Not only for a while, but we cannot forgive them for a long time. That is a big problem. We may not be able to forgive at that instant, but then we have to bring ourselves to the Lord to receive grace and learn a lesson before Him. And the Lord will surely lead us through that kind of situation. And the second matter we have to beware of is that our love for the Lord and the church may gradually become cold and backslide backslided. So at first, we may have a burning heart, a burning burden for the Lord in serving Him. But eventually, our heart had become lukewarm. And our heart that was loving the Lord and the church became lukewarm. Although we may encounter these things, praise the Lord. The Lord has a way for us to Turn away from all these kind of situations. And the key is through His cross, through the Spirit, and through the Word. This would help us to live in the freshness of His resurrection. And the topic of this message uh, shows us that we mainly experience Christ as these two items. First, resurrection and the grain of wheat. So to the two Roman numerals in this message, first one shows us it has something to do with us being renewed, to experience Him as the resurrection, to help us renew day by day. And Roman numeral two on our experiencing Him as the grain of wheat has something to do our glorification. This message is very rich. We can mainly tackle this message in three aspects. So first, we uh, have to focus on Christ, His, His resurrection, the aspect of the truth of His resurrection. In order to know, to experience, to enjoy, and to express Him, first, we need to see the truth of His resurrection. This message reveals three aspects of resurrection. That is the three things he accomplished in the stage of inclusion. We know that the, uh, there are three stages to Christ's uh, full ministry. The first stage is the stage of incarnation. The infinite God became 
a finite man in time. The triune God joined and mingled with the tripartite man, and then Christ, in his human living, expressed God's divine attributes in his human virtues. And the fourth thing is. Through his death on the cross, he accomplished the judicial redemption, and these four four things are accomplished by Christ in his、uh, stage of incarnation. Although we are mainly speaking of resurrection today, but resurrection has very much to do with his death, and this this death is. A all-inclusive death, and that is also a life-releasing death. So after he died, he resurrected. So、uh, the second stage in his stage of inclusion, we also call it as the stage of the spirit. In this stage, he all he also accomplished three things. In Roman number one, point A one. In his resurrection, he became the firstborn son of God, and second, he became the life-giving spirit, and the thirdly, he regenerated believers for the building up of his body. Praise the Lord! We have to remember these three things. We have to be able to say, God, Christ, in his resurrection, became the firstborn son of God. And became the life-giving spirit, and for the church, his body, he regenerated believers. He was the firstborn son of God, and we were the many sons of God. And the spirit was the consummation of the triune God. The spirit was the reality of everything. He was the spirit of reality. He was the reality of the triune God. He was the reality of the resurrection, and he was the reality of the body of Christ. So, without the Spirit, there is no body of Christ, no church. So, first part is that we need to see the truth of Christ's resurrection, and then we have to live in Christ's resurrection. To do this, we have to experience the God of Resurrection. The God Paul experienced was not only a living God, but the God he experienced was also a God of Resurrection. The living God can do something for us outwardly. If we cannot find a job, He may prepare a job for us. If we are ill, He may come to. Come to heal us, but after we are healed, God is God, and we are ourselves. We haven't made much connection or have much relationship with Him. However, when we experience Him as the God of Resurrection, His life and nature will be worked into our being, so that. God can be joined and mingled with us, so that that we can become one. To experience Him as the God of Resurrection, there are two aspects of this experience. The first aspect is the outward aspect, where God uses all things around us to work for our benefit, to so that we can be conformed to the image of the Son of God. Hallelujah! So, through every one, everything that happened, and even the hardships we encountered, they all worked for this purpose, so that we can be conformed to Christ as the firstborn Son of God. And the other aspect is the inward aspect, because of His resurrection life, the supply of this life to us. We are being nourished and supplied, so that we renew day by day, and Him added into us. For that, for this, we have to contact Him. We have to open ourselves to Him, so that He can come into our being. 
so that his element can gradually increase in our being. Every morning, the first thing we do, we have to open ourselves to him. We have to pray, Lord Jesus, I open myself to you. May you come into my being more and more and dispense all your divine elements into my being. Amen. Praise the Lord. In this way, we can be saved from our oldness, from the shrewdness and lukewarmness and being renewed day by day. And the, in the third aspect, we can experience Christ as the grain of wheat. And this uh, has to do with our glorification. And in John chapter 12, verse 23 and 24, Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And in Luke chapter 12, verse 49 and 50, the Lord says, I have come to cast fire on the earth and how I wish that it were already kindled. And I have a baptism to be baptized with and how I am pressed until it is accomplished. So all these scriptures shows us that the glory of Christ's divinity with his divine life was originally concealed in him as in a grain of wheat. And then one day, this grain of wheat that he is, is being uh, cast into the ground and buried in the ground and dies there. The divinity along with his divine life was then being released. And all these verses shows us that Christ, he was constrained, impressed. He was longing to be baptized with the baptism of his death so that his glory and his divinity with the fire of his divine life can be eventually released. And point C, the release of the glory of Christ's divinity was through the breaking of the shell of his humanity by his death. So praise the Lord, as we know that before Christ's death, in his humanity, there was no sin to be found. There was no impurity in his humanity. And although this was so, it still had to pass through death and resurrection to be lifted into the standard of his divinity. So we can regard the death of Christ as a life releasing death, an all inclusive death. So Christ's death, on the one hand, his death terminated all the negative things that is in the universe terminated Satan as the source of evil. And on the other hand, the positive side, he released the divine life through his death. So we can address his death as the all-inclusive death. So we thank the Lord. His death was not only the death that released his divine life, but also released his glory. This was originally in the stage of his incarnation. And through his glorification, uh, we are shifted to the stage of inclusion, the stage of the spirit. So the stage of inclusion covers the time from uh, his resurrection to the fall, the decay of the church. We address his resurrection as the wonderful and extraordinary resurrection. This resurrection 
was the life-giving resurrection. Since he was uh, the first, became the firstborn son of God and became the life-giving spirit. And for his, uh, the body of Christ, he regenerated the believers. And through this life-releasing death and life-dispensing resurrection, he brought all the believers into an inco incorporation. This uh, incorporation particularly is the process triune God and the tripartite redeemed regenerated man they are joined in life and mingled in their nature to become a, an enlarged divine human universal incorporation. And there are three aspects to this particular incorporation. The first aspect is the Father's house. As we know, the church as the house of God has something to do with life. And secondly, the house has also something to do with love, loving in the house of God. And then thirdly, the house of God shows uh, the preference and all those who inhabits the house of the church as the house of God we enjoy rest and satisfaction in this house. God and man both enjoy rest and satisfaction in the house of God. That's why we always say that the church is a home, a house, is a school, and even a hospital. The school is not a police station, nor a court. And in the Father's house, we can gain His rest, satisfaction, and manifestation. This requires our loving Him, so that by the constant visitation to the redeemed elect of the Father and the Son with the Spirit. And this building became an entity of four in one. The body as the uh, visible structure outwardly. And our triune God, God the Father as the source. And the Son as the element. And the Spirit as the essence. As their invisible uh, content within. Praise the Lord. And then we have to come to the second aspect of this incorporation. The second aspect is the son's true vine. This uh, is recorded in John chapter 15. This requires our remaining in the uh, joining in life with the death and the resurrected Christ. Just as our Lord mentioned, uh, he is the true vine, and the fa his father, the father is the husband's man, husbandman. So our Lord took our took took the father as his son, his reign, his life, light, and everything. And then the Lord said, "I am the vine; you are the branches, and the branches must abide in the vine." We have, have to abide in the vine to receive all his riches and supply so that we can constantly live in the life union with this crucified and resurrected Christ. If we do not abide in him, apart from him, we can do nothing. So the third aspect of this Universal incorporation is mentioned in John 16, that is, the child of the Spirit, the new man. And through this new man, to, it would, he would carry out God's eternal economy. And this requires our putting on the new man by being renewed in the spirit of our mind. So in Ephesians, it says we have to put off the old man put off 
the old nature, all the old habits that comes with it, and put on the new man first by putting on his divine nature, and secondly we have to put on the corporate new man that is the church life. So finally. I personally really appreciate and enjoy the riches that has been released and shown to us in this outline, because mainly I fellowship considering Roman number two. We have to experience him as the grain of wheat, and every subpoint here、uh, give us a very clear view. So in all these outlines,、uh, they are not really hard, but the thing we need to do is we have to practice to to apply these, to apply them and speak them in our daily living. How do we apply this? First, we have seen that Christ is the only grain of wheat. He Fell into the ground and died, in that he lose he loses his soul life, so that in resurrection he can release the divine life to many other grains. So we, as the many grains, we also should lose our soul life through death, so that we can enjoy him as the resurrection life. Not only so. Us, the wheat, the grains of wheat, has to be grounded into flour, and eventually blended into a bread. So, although this message is on resurrection, but two words, death and burial, we cannot forget these two things. Death and being buried is the way to produce the church. And to、uh, cause the church to increase. So praise the Lord. May we all have this seeing and apply these to our living, so that we can experience, enjoy, and then ex- and then express Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will share in Roman numeral one. We can experience, enjoy, and express Christ as the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. I enjoy the word resurrection. Brother and sisters, can anyone live in resurrection? There is only God in His human living, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, can overcome death and live in this resurrection life. Oh Lord Jesus, after He died on the cross. Three days, he resurrected and become the life-giving spirit. This life in resurrection have been dispensed into all of us. This life is in God, in me, and in you all. Amen. By this resurrection life, we can live the church life and live the body life. And this will also make us be part of His economy. Brother and sisters, this resurrection life can overcome death completely. So, in this message, is telling us that we, as a believer, we must have the experience, enjoy, and exp- express Christ as a resurrection. Amen. Saints, because this resurrection life is in us. That's why we can live in this resurrection life, but we need to see one thing: that what is blocking this resurrection life, what blocks、um, this resurrection life, is our natural life or our own natural ability. In D five, is telling us that what is the meaning of resurrection? Resurrection means that everything is of God. And not of us. It means that God alone is able, and that we are not able. Amen. All of those who know resurrection 
have given up hope in themselves, and they know that they cannot make it. Thank you, Lord. In resurrection, is only God can do all things, and we are not able. Brother and sister, since we were born, we go to the school. How we were taught to um is build up our natural ability. When we encounter a problem or having an anxiety, we will often use our natural ability to solve the problem. We think that oh, we can do it. We are able. But since even though we use our ability to solve things, some problems can be solved, but some might not be able to solve. However, the most important thing is that if we use our own ability to solve the problem, we will never experience the Lord. But whenever we experience the resurrection of the Lord, we will feel joyful, not depressed. We will feel that we have the The strength in the Lord, but if we use our own ability, the problem might be solved, but the result is we still not joyful. We are depressed and have no strength. Oh Lord, I have an experience about this because in our daily life we all might have many problems, so many things to fix. Not long, I learned to use one app. This app is called ChatGPT. When I have any problems, I ask ChatGPT, and it gave me an answer. And the answer came out really good. It helped me this past week. So I really like to ask ChatGPT to help me. But in the end, I feel that why am I very miserable? I have no strength in the Lord. I feel that I can't continue like this anymore. I need a hymn to sing, so I went to get my hymn book and sang seven, eight, nine. And in the first stanza says, "Oh, what peace we often forfeit! Oh, what needless pain we bear! All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer." Oh Lord, the moment I sang the song, I received the revelation. Actually, in my life, I have the Lord as a resurrection life in me. I just need to tell Him instead of asking so many to chat GPT. The more I ask, the more I feel deaf, brother and sisters. But when we turn to the Lord, do not use our natural ability and rely on Him absolutely. The result is we will be in resurrection. After I pray to the Lord, I'm so filled with joy. Since what a Christ we have, the marvelous one as a resurrection life in us, we must experience and enjoy Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Now we are enjoying Christ as the resurrection and the grain of wheat. Jesus said, "I am the resurrection." In John eleven twenty five. Actually, he died on the cross for us, but resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit, and become the firstborn son of God. Also, produced the church as his body by his resurrection. In the Old Testament, in Numbers seventeen, we saw twelve rods, which are leafless. Rootless, dry, and dead, but the one chosen by God, budding, budding rod signifies the Christ, the resurrected one, who is in us as life-giving Spirit. So we should bud, blossom, and bear fruit to maturity. In John twelve twenty-four, Christ, as the grain of wheat. His divine life was concealed. This grain falls into the ground and dies and bears much fruit. Remember, he is the grain, the firstborn son of God. Falls into the ground. This is his death. Dies and released the new life. This is the resurrection. In his resurrection. 
There are many grains, many sons of God, which we are, the believers, as the members of his body, the church. If we experience Christ's death, we also will resurrect it with him to enjoy. And finally, we will express Christ as the corporate body of Christ, the church, to bear much fruits, many grains. This is the Christian life. Christian life is living according to the Holy Spirit, which is in us as life-given spirit for maturity. This spirit walk in us to die with Christ, to resurrect with him. If we don't die with him, there is no resurrection. Resurrection means that everything is of God and not of us. It means that God alone is able and that we are not able. In order to live in resurrection, we must know, experience and gain the God of resurrection. That's why to be a Christian is not merely difficult, it is impossible, but only the process and consummated trying God who is living in us as the all-inclusive spirit can be a Christian. Only the spirit can be the Christian and only the spirit can be an overcomer. So I would like to read the footnote from 1 Peter 4, 16 says, The term Christian mean a man of Christ, one who is one with Christ, not only belonging to him, but also having his life and nature in an organic union with him, and who is lived by him, even living by him in his daily life, so we can experience and enjoy and express Christ as resurrection and the grain of wheat. Amen.